Okay, welcome everybody. I've got all the parts for this guy. I'm about ready to get it going. Um, output transformer, power transformer. I'm trying to get a general layout. I, I'll probably pick this up in a minute and just kind of try and get a view from the top as well. But here is the general layout. We're going to have our two instrument inputs and mic inputs over here. We're going to have the volume controls setting in here. We'll have our uh, three preamp tubes and then our phase inverter here, power tubes, and I've got the rectifier back in the back. Uh, the, and then the power switch and the light will be over here. Uh, we'll probably, whatever chassis I have will be a little bit tighter around this. I may even kind of slide these this way a little bit so that we've got a good chunk of empty space here and we just keep the controls centralized. Output will be back here as well as a, the power plug and the fuse. So getting close. Now the next step really is digging through all of this and, or not digging, but marking all of this stuff off, cutting the holes in the chassis, etc. So I'm not great at that. I'm not an expert at it. I will get it done and I will show you the after. So we'll see you then. All right, so as you can see here, this is top view. I also just kind of realized, and I've actually adjusted a little bit. If you look down here, I have moved the power tubes and the, I'm gonna move the power tubes and the rectifier to the back. You need access to those from the back when you're trying to change it out usually. So, and also it just means that we have, you know, just generally a little bit more room in, in this area and the transformer is not so tight and I can kind of wheel it this way a little bit. But, but you know, basically that's where most of the time your tubes will go is along the back um, because you have a chassis covering this and, the, and the, the back side is where you'll get access to come in to be able to replace your tubes. So there you go. Okay, so we've gotten some progress done today here so far. Hopefully I'll have a little more later, but I gotta take care of some other stuff. But uh, transformer in, power transformer, this is the power transformer, output transformer board i've cut all the sockets for the uh, or the holes for the tube sockets i've you know cut all the holes here a couple of new mistakes first of all uh i've done i did this on my last build and i had to trash a, a crappy metal sh thing that i made but i bought one from doug this time but um <laughs> i've got the board reversed from the order of the tubes so i should have really put the power transformer here and the power and tubes stuff here and the other way around but i had it backwards in my head so i'm gonna have to like so the first tube goes to here second tube goes to here third tube goes to here fourth tube goes to there so they're going to be crossing over each other, which wasn't very bright of me. Um, but at this point, I don't want to throw the whole chassis away. I still think I'll be okay to manage noise. As I said, one of the things I did last time was I, I got, um, uh, I bought from Doug this time a whole bunch of shielded cable. So all of my grid connections are going to be shielded cable. That really helped with the Vox anyway. All right, so I showed you a little bit before all the different kinds of resistors and what I was doing. And today I'm just going to, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I'm going to solder a little bit. Um, for example, I've got a solder guy into here and a solder guy into there. So I've got these measured already about the right size, but we only need it to go down to the side into the turret a bit. So I'm gonna cut off here and then about the same side on that side as well. And then I should be able to just stick this guy in there. And I'm good to go. Now I can solder these in now because I'm mainly gonna be only connecting power to the sides of these rails. So I'll go ahead and, and I looked this up on the schematic. Of course, I've shown you this before. It's probably gonna be blurry in the background because I'm focused in here, but I checked that, that's the, the right one for this, but you can also check on the schematic. I've got a copy of that on hand. And that one would be the 10K. So, uh, as I've kind of talked about before, what I will do now is just to get, uh, I gotta clean my tip a little bit, it's kind of dirty. Um, but you just tin just a little bit to create some connectivity to, the, to that. And then you touch it here, and you wanna flow it into the, connection there good that should be good to go oh i do need to turn my fan on this will mad a little bit of noise but uh just do this to keep my lungs from dying uh, same thing on this side over here and i don't know how well this will be how audible this will be now but so there we go that's that's those two soldered now what I, I think I mentioned before, what I'll quite often do at this point is check my continuity, or my, I'm sorry, I will test this, it should be a 10K resistor. So I will get this and put it on the resistance, and then shoot, I can even check all the way down to this end, just kind of touch onto this turret, and then touch to here and I should get 10K. And you want to touch on the turret because you want to get a feeling for how well uh, of a connection you've made. So as you can see there, 10K, 9.87, you know, within tolerances. Boom, that's good to go. So I'll just be repeating that process now with this one as well. Just cutting off a small amount. 
and putting this guy in here. And the whole idea here, uh, I don't need to repeat this for the whole thing, but I will show you a shot at the end as well, is you get these all in, solder them in, and then uh, the circuit is ready for you to attach things to the bottom or the top. So power will come in from this side and go across, resistors will go up and head off into the, uh, you know, the different areas. Uh, as you've seen, if you've been following along with the schematics that I posted in the thing, you'll see the wirings that connect out. Uh, as I mentioned on the last video, when I actually cut the chassis, which is to my left, I kind of messed up and I actually inverted these also. Even though the phase inverter is here and the first preamp tube is here, I'm going to have the tube sockets the other way around. The first tube will be here, so I'll have to be kind of running wires this way, crossways from each other, and I might have to try and think that through to make sure I'm trying not to actually have too much crosstalk. But uh, I do use the grid uh, with the sensitive the grids. I, I try and use uh, shielded wire as well. So. Uh, yet another of my many new mistakes. So anyway, I'll continue soldering this up and love you, uh, let you guys get a shot of it when I'm done. There's one other part I forgot to mention. One of the forum members, uh, Slucky, has provided me with a, a new old stock resistor that I'm going to put into this build right here. 3.3K. It's uh, supposed to be a 3K, but uh, because of the variance, it's 3.3. But I've, you know, I was going to use 3.3 because that's the closest I could get. It's on the stores now, but it could vary up to 3.6ish, I think. So as you can see here, it's it's reading at about 3.3K. It's got a little bit of corrosion. I might have to try and see if I can clean that off. But I'm going to be using that in the build as well. So you'll end up if you can kind of see it. You won't be able to see it because I'm going to put a capacitor over the top of it, but it goes there uh, as well. So oh, actually no, the 3K is. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's sorry. I'm confusing it with the 2 meg that goes to the uh, input for the first input. But yeah, so this goes to the ground for this one as a 3K. Okay, now the circuit is done, on this side anyway. So I just want to go through and quickly check. I won't do all of them, but like I told you before, I like to check really more from the turret to turret end. That should be a 110K resistance. So sometimes you got to get a little, little uh, you know, pin contact in there, but... That's 109.6, pretty close. So I'll just check some of these values here. I should have 3.3K, and I like to touch more on the turret, not on the thing. There we go, 3.3. Now Steve's, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and rotate this, uh, was so thick, I couldn't put both of these in, so I had to wrap the wires around carefully for this guy, which will mean I'm also going to have to kind of wrap in the ground off of that, but that's okay, it works. Um, the uh, These are 100K resistors, so I like to check those. And again, I like to give it a little distance between them. 101, perfect, because you want to see that you're getting continuity. If you just plug right at that point, you could, in theory, be tricking yourself. So, you know, for example, I want to test, if I want to test this resistor, rather than testing from this end to this end, I'm going to actually touch the, this is a cap, I'm going to touch the lead of the cap, let it go through the turret, across the resistor, clear over to the other end of this one, and I should still get it, and there we go. So that's a good way, touching past the turret somewhere, and past the turret somewhere, to make sure you're getting good continuity. I'm seeing 100 back and forth. There we go, 100. And that, I, I could be kind of, uh, sometimes you get things like solder flux and things that will make it a little tricky to not get a good connection. You have to try a little different location. 100 perfectly. See, so, um, you know, 100 perfectly. All right, so I will go through, check everything, make sure it looks good, but this will be ready to go inside of the chassis pretty soon as well. And, you know, hopefully just within a day or two, maybe by this weekend I'll have this one done. We'll have a video for you guys this weekend showing me playing it. So we're getting close. Very excited.